This year, the game will be played in Athens. And Auburn has won 18 times here. They've got a better record in Athens than do the Georgia Bulldogs. Nevertheless, it's the second game of our doubleheader on CBS, the Home Depot SEC on CBS. The Auburn Tigers with a 6-3 record. The Georgia Bulldogs started 0-2. They've won seven in a row. Good afternoon, everybody. Vern Lundquist along with Gary Danielson. Tracy will be along in just a moment. Let's give you the updated stats now. Many of you saw South Carolina prevail in its game against Florida. So as we kick off, Georgia with one loss, but they did lose earlier to South Carolina. Florida and Vanderbilt, Kentucky and Tennessee bring up the rest of these. Gary, let's talk about what faces Georgia now. It's pretty clear cut. Yeah, they, they control their own destiny. And I think uh, looking back, they would love to be in the spot they are now to be able to run the table and be in the championship. How do you expect uh, Aaron Murray to affect play here? Today? You know, Vern, all year we talked about quarterback play in this league, and I think today you got to start with Aaron Murray. He's the hottest quarterback in this league. He's the most experienced quarterback in this league, and last week against New Mexico State, he was able to kind of tune it up again for today, throwing five touchdown passes in just one quarter, and he's also got his weapons back. Malcolm Mitchell, just a freshman, but he's the speed guy. He's the guy that gets the big plays, but in this league, you want balance, and Isaiah Crowell will be back after a one-game suspension, so I think Mark Rick, I think Aaron Murray feels pretty good about the fact that they've got three players that can produce balance in this game. Last time we saw the Auburn Tigers was in Baton Rouge. They called upon Clint Mosley in that atmosphere to make his first start in his career. Now he's a wily old veteran yeah. this is his third star. Yeah. Well, it was baptism under fire, no doubt about that. But in this league, you got to jump in the deep end sooner or later. And Clint is in the league. I think he's much improved, very confident. But he, too, I think, has his weapon back in this game. Emery Blake, I think, is the go-to guy in this offense for Gus Bell's zone spread. He opens it up for them to not only throw the ball all over the field, but run the ball. He's finally going to be healthy, and I think we're going to see the, the Auburn offense that everybody for Auburn wants to have. Well, for more on this very intense rivalry, let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Well, that's right, guys. It's called the Deep South's oldest rivalry, but it has become uglier over the past few seasons, especially last year with the 10 personal foul penalties, the, the questionable hits, the penalties, the punches, the suspensions. According to a Wall Street Journal report, out of 40 rivalries over the last five years, Auburn, Georgia is considered the nastiest. Can we expect another physical contest today? Well, Georgia tight end Aaron White thinks so. He told me we haven't forgotten about anything, but we're not dwelling on it. We have to control our emotions, and at the end of the day, something's going to happen. I think it's the team that keeps its cool and executes that will come out on top. We'll see, guys. All right, Tracy, thank you. It is a crisp, clear afternoon. Early November, still 64 degrees, winds out of the south, southwest. And the forecast for mostly sunny skies. Auburn's brought the band up from Auburn, Alabama. And of course, the Georgia band here, as well as well as a full house. It will be. Got some folks who are uh, a little late getting into their seats. Auburn won the toss. They have deferred the option. And Georgia will get the ball to start the game. The Bulldogs, losers to Boise State and South Carolina. They have come back with seven in a row to lead the SEC. But as we mentioned just a moment ago, South Carolina did win their game against the Georgia Bulldogs. Brandon Boykin in his career, four kickoff returns for touchdowns, three of them 100 yards each. Cody Parkey will kick off for the Tigers of Auburn, six and three themselves. All three losses on the road. All three losses to teams ranked in the top 11 of the current BCS standings. Boykin at the six. Boykin to the 30. Well, let's uh, introduce you to the Chick-fil-A starting lineups when we begin. 
with Aaron Murray 60 percent completion 23 touchdowns that leads the SEC and eight interceptions. When you look at Georgia you just wonder you know Owen to start runoff seven in a row was it who they played or are they actually getting better. That's what we'll see today. First down 10. Murray play action rolls right he'll tuck it and run it and crosses to 35 down at the 37. Well you bet Aaron Murray how about the rest of his offense will begin with the uh, offensive line Cordy Glenn Cantarius Gates Ben Jones Burnett and Justin Anderson. Malcolm Mitchell has missed the last three games. Welcome back leading receiver on the team Figgins Crowell after the suspension. Orson Charles the tight end a very good one and Tavares King the whiteout. Yeah and Ryan Smith was the tackler on that play and he's the one injured. I think it was him wasn't it. Uh, Jonathan but Darren Bates is it Bates 25 it might be 35 it's hard 30, to see oh, the two of the three. I'll tell you first play of the game and you know depth is a problem on defense all over this the, the Southeast Conference especially on defense. Jonathan Evans it yeah. is. Murray well covered get one side Ryan Smith makes the tackle I thought it was him because he made the big tackle but it was Evans coming across. So Evans trots off unassisted and it'll be second down and four. Isaiah Crowell the running back one game suspension he and two others. They went uh, very deep on the depth chart for running backs in their win last week against New Mexico State. And Crowell gets the handoff. Nice tackle. And defensively now for the Auburn Tigers, Lemonier, Whitker, Gabe Wright, a true freshman, and Nosa Igwe. That's the front four. The linebackers are Evans, just saw him trot off. El Toro Freeman, 19 tackles in the last two games. And Darren Bates, Davis, Thorpe, McNeil, and Tisharvin Bell. And it's third down and one. Real interesting here what they do in running short yards. Will they challenge the run game or will they try to get fancy with getting out on the edge? Up the middle? Oh, I don't think so. I don't know. Oh, well, let's see. It looks like he got a favorable spot near the 39 or 40. Now, Paul yeah, Freeman was there to make the tackle. Defended very well. You're right. Freeman, who's been a tackling machine lately, ball is stuffed up inside and. It looks like they're going to give him the mark. That was very close. I didn't know if he got to the line or not. A very generous spot it would appear but he did uh, the ball was spotted at the 40 yeah, yard line. This is a quick quick snap here and a good quick snap so it can't go to the replay official because that is reviewable. Well no ankle tackle. It was El Toro Freeman again got down low. That's two tackles for Freeman in his third consecutive start. You know, and we asked Ted Roof about Freeman, like, uh, you know, why is he coming on making so many plays lately? And he goes, he's just growing up. You know, a junior college player, figuring out the game, figuring out the league, and just uh, understanding the defense. Second down, 10. Let's see. Out of the spread, two wide receivers to the left. And one uh, to the right. Here's Murray. A lot of time. And not that much time. And he throws it away. It's caught. And he got something positive out of a near yeah. sack. I think uh, head referee Tom Ritter was ready to throw intentional grounding, but it's hard to throw intentional grounding when you complete the pass. <laughs> Looked like for sure it was going to be a sack on the play by Lemonier. And then all of a sudden, I don't even know if he saw him. You get a completion on it. Bennett, who caught one of those touchdowns on fourth down in the win against Florida. There's motion in the line. And the offensive line appeared to stay set. Free play. Yep. And uh, it is incomplete. That was a great veteran play by Ben Jones that time. He saw the defender jump off sides. Snap the ball and it was a freeze play for the offensive line. They're going to get it to third and short again. Defense on the 25. Five yard penalty remains. Third down. 
Tom Ritter, our referee. And that was called on Darren Bates, number 25. There's Jones. You know, that was the lament that Gene uh, Chizik gave us about his team keeping the offense on the field with penalties. And here it is again. It might be the same circumstance. Third down. Now let's see where the spot is this time. Oh, yeah, I think he got it. Yep. It has not been easy. It has not been pretty. That defensive line for Auburn is making plays and standing stout. But just enough. Watch it. He gets hit right in the face and then bounces forward on it. And the ball bisects midfield now. Mark Richt in his 11th season as the head coach at Georgia. And, and you know, it, it, they've been first downs here, but Auburn's doing it pretty much without having to bring their safeties up. They're guarding against the big deep pass, which was goal number one, they told us. See what uh, Georgia offers here on first down and 10. Uh, that's a delay of game call, I think. Yep. Delay game offense, five yard penalty, first half. Starting offensive line, 6'4, 329. And as Gary pointed out, a veteran unit. They've got uh, senior, sophomore, senior, sophomore, senior from left to right tackles. First and 15. Crowell got the five back. Chris Davis, number 11, makes the tackle. It will be interesting to watch Isaiah Crowell today. Now, the last time he played, you know, against Florida, he saw Richard Samuel come into that football game and kind of show a physical presence. Then he gets suspended, and now he they say he had a great week of practice. He is ready to carry the load. True freshman out of Columbus, Georgia, Carver High School. Murray hit as he lets it go. He's got a man open. He can't complete it to Chris Conley. That's pretty good coverage in the secondary that time by Auburn. I, I think that the Bulldogs were trying to get something, you know, maybe half it so it'd be third and medium. Conley's on the bottom of the screen right down here. Really nothing in the middle of the field. Well, I guess he could have gone to Bennett right there in the middle. Michael Bennett would have given him you know, third and medium. Now third and ten. And you can see for the season, look at the second line of the graphic, three of 37 for the year on third and ten. So if you're playing the odds. <laughs> yes. Eh. Third down ten. Wow, again, you can't get bigger, more prominently displayed 40, 25 second clocks in this stadium. They're right, right in snap, front of you. Start. Number 60, up and five yard penalty remains third down. Well, one smart move, one yeah. less than. That's Ben Jones again, the center. And that was the key. I mean, that, the defensive line for Auburn, they rushed the passer. Now, can they get it in these positions of third and long? They will get very comfortable, and they're going to come after him. Murray pump fake goes right side double coverage Got it. it's complete to Malcolm Mitchell that's the freshman who's back after a three game absence and you know Murray was going to Mitchell the whole way he fainted to the left but he was throwing a back shoulder throw all the way here he just let it go it was overrun outside by Chris Davis and that's that situation when you're playing it what they're basically playing out there is quarters everybody takes a quarter of the field he got to the outside of Chris Davis and just threw it to the sideline well they're now four for 38 for the year on third and ten or longer and a 45 yard gain ball at the ten for well no Corey Lemonier number 55 makes the stop well Georgia Inside the 20 here, the Verizon Red Zone stats, 23 touchdowns, 39 possessions. That's below the national average of 62%. Second down. It's second down and seven at the eight. Four wides.
Murray in the end zone. Oh. Orson Charles, the intended receiver, the tight end, number seven. High school teammate of uh, Aaron Murray at Plant High School in Tampa. It is really interesting that uh, Auburn's defense is keeping six in the box. They're forcing Georgia to throw the football here. They're not going to let them run the quarterback draw. They're keeping four defensive linemen and two people right here in the box. They're going to say you have to throw it. Third and seven. This is the 12th play of the opening drive of the ball game. Now the look back. Murray looking left all the way. Got it. Tavares King. Touchdown. George is on the board. no room behind you you wonder how you can get open by this much I mean you're to the bottom of the field can't go deep on you Demetrius McNeil that time you know you got to jump those routes that's just way too easy Blair Walsh for the extra point he will alternate on kicking situations today Walsh is having a tough year but he does hammer home his 30 Fifth straight extra point. Well, you're right. You're right here. Look at the space. There's nowhere behind you. You've got to squat on that goal line and force a tough throw. It's a little too easy. Just backs out and makes a big hole for Aaron Murray to throw it into. 12 plays, 70 yards. They chewed up 6-0-3. Bulldogs up by seven. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. It's all about Cameron Newt works for the pylon. He's in the touchdown! Touchdown! This is the Deep South Soldiers rivalry at its best. Philip Lutzen Kirkins, mom and his three sisters. Auburn leads the all time series 54 52. UGA has scored Auburn by a total of 38 points. And one of the great players in the center, slightly bearded now, Jake Scott, being presented with his Hall of Fame, Hall of Fame plaque by Matt Sign of the National Football Foundation and Hall of Fame. He'll be uh, honored again in New York City on a Tuesday night, first Tuesday night in December. Jake, an old, old friend, and it's great to see him get his due. Played uh, with the Dolphins, of course, and the Redskins. Trey Mason is the deep man. Juan Bray is also back, and here is Blair Walsh. And, and what did Mark Brick say? Kickoffs have been an underline, a circle. They put more starters on the kickoff unit. That Florida game was a disaster. Yes. And they, uh, Jeff Demps returned one for 99 yards in the touchdown. And that one, there's a positive start. And for his third start now, the Chick fil A starting lineups here is Clint Mosley out of Leroy, Alabama. 12 of 15 against Ole Miss. Four touchdowns, no interceptions. In that opening game against LSU, he didn't get much help up front. Six sacks by the Tigers in that one. Seven nothing, 8.53 to go. Michael Dyer is the running back. He comes right, cuts it left, and picks up uh, a couple of yards. And let's uh, introduce you to the Auburn offense. Six and three for the year. A.J. Green, Slade, Dismuke, Sullen, and Brandon Mosley at right tackle. Emery Blake back after missing three games himself. Lutzen Kirkin, Michael Dyer, 177 yards in the win against Ole Miss. On second down, here's Mosley. Fires it, caught first down. And right away, Emery Blake makes his presence felt. Defensively, Jones, Jenkins, and Tyson up front. Jarvis Jones, four sacks in the win over Florida. Gilliard, Ogletree, 
And in the secondary, Cummings, Williams, Rambo, and Brandon Boykin. First down, 10. That's Quindarius Carr, number nine, top of the screen, quick screen, incomplete. That is a forward pass, not a lateral, intended for Quan Bray, number four. Yeah, Quan Bray barely slowed that one down. Now, we all know, watching Georgia, they're bigger up front. Now, this team, this defense gave up over 350, 315 yards to Auburn running the ball last year. But I, I'm looking out there, I don't see Cam Newton, so <laughs> might have a little tougher time. No. Blake near side. Lutzen Kirken is just outside him off the line of scrimmage. Mosley steps up, fires it out for Lutzen Kirken. Spin move. God, he's so athletic, isn't he? He really is. You know, it's not for those type of H backs. It's not that you have to be a 4 4, 4 5. It's how you can operate in small amount of space and how you can handle the football. I mean, this guy is comfortable blocking, catching the ball. Watch this one. Catches it one handed, shifts it to his other hand. That is a skilled play right there. Beautiful. And it was the catch and then the switch that yep, allowed him absolutely. to get the ball in. And you just saw him on that catch right there. And he caught the ball in, in this game we're watching, spun quickly, got an extra five, six yards. He's just so comfortable with his body on the football field. Now, Philip Lutz and Kirkman, they're going to measure for the first down here. The Lutzy uh, came in the uh, aftermath of his game winning touchdown catch from Newton in the Al uh, Auburn Alabama game last year. And He's, it's become a YouTube sensation. He did a little. It looked like an Irish jig almost in the uh, in the end zone, and it's now known among Auburn faithful as the Lutzy. Sounds like something in skating. Yes. Now you see Auburn substituted, so the umpire comes up, looks over to Georgia to see if they want to substitute. They don't, and then he lets them snap the ball. McCaleb is on the field. They fake it to him. Mosley goes deep. Blake is down there. Got it. Got him again. The 10. Yes. Great fake. By I think Mosley. this is the same play they used to start the game in the SEC championship last year. One fake, two fakes, and then Blake goes deep. Rambo should have just grabbed him. It would only have been a 15-yard play, but again, you see the value of Emory Blake. Quickly makes his presence known. A 45-yard catch and a first down and goal. Mosley nailed at the 11. See, there's the difference. Now, there's nothing against Clint Mosley. Nobody's Cam Newton. I get that. But Jarvis Jones can feel comfortable going in and tackling the ball carrier because they really don't care if Mosley keeps it. Watch Jarvis Jones come off the edge. I don't care. If there's no Cam Newton back there. So I'll tackle the guy he fakes to and let my other guys get the quarterback. Jarvis Jones, four sacks against Florida. Play action, modest, and that one's a little low, and he led McCaleb. Uh, what do you think? Catchable? Yeah. Well, you know, interestingly, short passes have to be more accurate than long passes because the offensive player doesn't have as much time to react to the throw and make it look good. So when you're inaccurate, it's an incomplete pass on a short pass. Where Emory Blake, you can miss him by 10 yards deep. He'll adjust to it. Third and goal. Uh oh. That's going to be a penalty on Georgia. Free play. Yeah, free play. He overthrows Blake on the near side. Here's Tom Ritter. Offside. Defense. Half the distance to the goal. We play third down. Mm, uh, let's see what we got. Trying to come on an inside blitz. Probably was Jones right here. Wasn't yeah. It? Yes. Too much. Oh, no, I don't even know if he got over the line that time. Only 17 first quarter points. They have outscored their opponents 68 to 17. So. 
They have not given up many points in the first quarter. Here's the reverse. Option pass into the end zone. That is caught for a touchdown. C.J. Uzoma threw it. Are you kidding me? And of course, Philip Lutzenkirchen caught it. His 13th career touchdown catch. It isn't as if they completely fooled the Georgia defense, but it was executed perfectly. And Lutzenkirchen makes just such a big target, protects the ball, and gets into the end zone. Great drive, great answer for Auburn in this football game. Cody Parkey is on to attempt the tying extra point. Lutzen Kirkins 19th catch of the year. That's his sixth touchdown grab. Watch how he delays just long enough to allow the receiver to clear and then he gets open. He knows he's got time because it's a reverse. Delay, 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 and then you go to the empty part of the field. All of you who had C.J. Uzuma to throw the first touchdown catch for Auburn, stand up and shout. C.J. Uzama, U-Z-O-M-A-H, high school quarterback at North Gwinnett, 6'4". <laughs> and he's uh, among those now who can say, well, yeah, my first pass was good for a touchdown. Yes. He didn't look like he was a 5,000-yard thrower on that one. But, <laughs> <You don't. laughs> but effective. <laughs> Uzama. Brandon Boykin. And uh, Gary, take us through the touchdown again. Well, you know, Lutzenkirchen knew he had time, so he sold the play very well. That's the patience you need. It's almost as if he was sneaking. He waited and waited and allowed that space to become open. That's that patience. And Chizik said, yep, way to go, Gus. Dialed up another one. You know, it's not like Auburn, Vern, excuse me, is going to be uh, kind of intimidated playing on the road. I mean, they played L number one LSU on the road, number eight Arkansas on the road, number nine Clemson on the road. They won at South Carolina, number 13. Man. Yeah. Here's Murray, screen, left side. Oh, what a blur. That is an incredible play by Otero Freeman. It was Crowell who caught the pass, and he had the he had the thing set up in front of him. I'll tell you, that is middle linebacker play in college football. I mean, he's coming from this side. Look, he's matched up by number one. He sees the play. When he crosses, he knows he's got to get him. Runs right by the offensive lineman right there, Gates. If Gates would have got him, just thrown on him, that would have been a big play. Now Carlton Thomas has taken Crowell's spot, number 30. Murray goes right side. Caught by Michael Bennett, number 82, out to the 33-yard 30, line. 5.20 to go, 7-7 seven, seven game. Each team with a touchdown on its first possession. Well, here we go, third down. And remember on the first drive, a 12-play drive, Georgia converted all four third down plays. Third and six with an offsides, and three more. The last one, a touchdown on third down. Third and two here, four wides. And Murray... Out of the spread. Thomas is still the running back. Murray got the first down. Orson Charles fights for additional yardage. Charles with his first catch of the day. 32 on the season now. Right. They put the tight end Charles up to the wide receiver spot. And here's where Murray really had to show great accuracy because Charles was not open. Up here is Charles, the tight end. Now watch him come over the middle. He's not open. Good coverage that time from the secondary. The ball was placed perfectly, and it had to be for the first down. And George is still perfect on third down conversions. Five for five. How about that for a start? Murray, the sophomore. 23 touch, 24 now. And here is Thomas. He's only listed at 5'7", 163 yards. Harton, I beg your pardon. It was Harton. I'll tell you, Justin Anderson, number 79. They ran by big 79 that time. Harton made a good job. And Thomas stays on. Now 
Now they look over. It was Thomas on the last play. Carlson Thomas, number 30. 340 to go. Play action again. Oh, another man open again. Marlon Brown. I'll tell you, they said Marlon Brown Burn had a great week of practice this week. Said he was running fluidly, and I'll tell you, Aaron Murray is on the money. They talk about him not being a great accurate thrower, but so far in this game, he has been. Seven of nine in the early going now. And that was a 25-yard gain. He's hit his last five in a row. What was it? Nine Recently, of, yeah. He missed nine. Remember that against Florida in a row? But yep. boy, he came back last week and got it tuned up. On first down. Got a man. Diving catch. Touchdown, Michael Bennett. <laughs> Bennett is a redshirt freshman. This is going to be close, Vern, whether the ground helped him. Remember the Bennett had the fourth down catch against Florida. Let's see if this doesn't get helped by the ground. Looks like he got his arms underneath it. He beat Nico Thorpe on the play. I don't see how they can overturn that so far. No, you? I do not. Extra point is up. This is Brandon Bogote. We mentioned as you take a look at uh, Michael Bennett, they will alternate kickers today. Well, he knew he had one-on-one -on -one coverage. He knew he had a bunch of open space to the backside right here. There's the matchup inside Bennett. Just throw it to the outside. You got a big, tall receiver, another perfectly thrown ball, and Aaron Murray has gone through his mechanics. Mike Bobo says when he's mechanically strong, standing tall, he completes the ball. Well, Bennett leaned out with that 6-3 frame. Aaron Murray now 8 of 10, two touchdowns. Michael Bennett, the redshirt freshman from Alpharetta, suburb of Atlanta. An hour and a half down the road and for the season. Look at the freshman contribution, Gary. Yeah, and, and what did uh, Mark Rick tell us? He goes, you know, last year we had a really good player, A.J. Green. But this year we got more weapons. He says, you know, I like it with more weapons to throw to. I, I would concur, but it, Green was a pretty good player. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, finally some depth on a kickoff. For That's Georgia. Bogate. They are rotating kickers. Oh, oh man. Oh, wow. Quintavious Harrow. Oh, boy. There's the hit. Oh, man. And if you're an Auburn fan, and if you're Trey Mason, you're remembering what LSU did to you on the road on the kickoffs. Remember that? When LSU was just laying out the Auburn kickoff return players. That was exactly like it. Boy, that looked close to helmet to helmet, too. Out of the flat, Emory Blake again. Monday, TV's number one comedy is all new with an episode so big, it'd be crazy to miss it. Two and a half men Monday, only CBS. Wow. Second down two. Blake already with three receptions. Auburn keeping it upstairs for the most part. And they will again on this one. Whoops. That was supposed to go to Blake. Yeah, I don't know if they were on the same page on that one. It was supposed to be a quick screen, and Blake was running some type of a route. I don't know if he slipped or whatever. He could not get back to the screen. Top left of the screen up there. Let's see if he doesn't slip on the play or something. Yeah, he kind of did. Couldn't get back to the play. Third and two. McCaleb is the running back.
Now they have to call a timeout. Gus Malzahn will uh, chat with his offensive unit, the offensive coordinator, Tom Cole. 2.20 to go, opening quarter. Auburn 7, Georgia 14, final two and a half minutes of the opening quarter, and a third down two. <laughs> Auburn. Big Chris Jenkins has to stay on the sideline and run in with a personnel look. Fake the reverse, off the back foot, got it first down, plus. Ontario McCaleb has now caught a pass out of the backfield in 13 consecutive games. He has become a very important weapon when they go to the air. Yeah, let's give some credit to Clint Mosley here. Remember, he was just under siege against LSU, but he's now fine, found his game bit, you know, and feels comfortable. Look at Auburn has not run for a yard in this game. He's had to throw the ball to move the ball. Auburn wants to run the ball. And Michael Dyer, who is their leading ground gainer, is not in the backfield now. That's McCaleb who stays in. And McCaleb gets the handoff. John Jenkins up high. There is a flag. I'll take a, the, the list of touchdowns versus incompletions. That's a pretty strong group of, of uh, quarterbacks there. Well, no? Couple, couple <laughs> I might think, okay. I'll take. <laughs> Have a hands on the 75 is on the line of penalty. Five yard penalty remains. First half. I'm just trying to well, be complimentary. I, I not just <laughs> couple, maybe couple. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> Illegal formation. <laughs> I mean, uh, yes. yes, stats are what count. T. Martin won a national championship. To Marcus Russell did too, but yeah. I guess I'm thinking of the next one. Yeah, I, I guess, guess you're right. right. And to Marcus Russell, wow, back home in Mobile, Alabama, out of the NFL. There's Jay Wisner, number 84, who's on the field. Mosley caught and dropped. Avery Jones, number 93, with the sack. Well, when you're going to play this uh, spread, it's a play-action passing offense, and you have to fake the ball. This is tough on the offensive line. You're trying to sell the run and still pass block, and uh, Sullen, John Sullen got beat that time, and uh, this Georgia defense has started to find in the last few three, four, five games the ability to rush the passer. Well, uh, Brendan Boykin, the outstanding senior defensive back is uh, down there checking on him. We'll be right back. Number two, Brandon Boykin walking off without assistance. That's good news. A little slight limp out of Fayetteville, Georgia. The junior who, uh, against all advice, wants to go into our business. Right. Remember, we were talking about the sacks. Uh, the last six games prior to this game, 19 sacks for this Georgia defense. Florida six, Mississippi State. They had five, Ole Miss four. One already in this game. And it's second down, 21. Pressure, screen. McCaleb gets outside, being chased by Brandon Smith. Sure did, didn't he? Ooh, wow. They set up the screen to both sides this time. Play was actually called to the left, and uh, McCaleb, once you give him any space at all, you can see Alec Ogletree got blocked out of play. Once he gets a crease, now you put it into third and medium. And Gene Chizik was dancing with the stars over yes, there on was. the sidelines. Well, be careful, Sean Payton in the NFL went down. Yeah, that's run right. Over, run over Saints. It's Jones against a three-man look, but it looks like they're rushing Jones, and now Todd Grantham may check out of it. Another timeout. How about that? Mmm. So the uh, question must be answered by Mosley. The question is being asked 
by Gus Malzahn. Six seconds remaining in the opening quarter. 14 7 Bulldogs lead. Auburn has used two timeouts. Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. Auburn now down to one timeout. They're looking at a third and eight. Should be the final play of quarter number one. Mosley thus far six of nine for 98 yards. Lutzenkirchen goes in motion. Draw play, nothing. That's that wraparound draw that you try to get that defensive line. Linebackers look at the quarterback. If you pass the running back, they usually say, okay, the draw is off. This is the time you wrap it around, and it did not work. Christian Robinson, Avery Jones were there for the uh, stop. That's the end of the first quarter. With our score, Georgia 14, Auburn 7. We'll return to Sanford Stadium after this message. And a word from your local station. just before kickoff after the national anthem and among those involved in the flyover Mike and Pat McGuinn their brothers one is an Auburn grad and of course one is a Georgia grad <laughs> we begin quarter number two Vern Lundquist Gary Danielson Tracy Wolfson Stephen Clark this is the first punt of the game Brandon Smith is the deep man Fair catch called for and taken by Smith. My goodness. Some hang time on that one, huh? 44 yard punt. Nothing on the return. Aaron Murray back on the field when we come back. Fourteen seven Georgia leads it time now to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success Gary Vern it was a simple pass play for a touchdown to Michael Bennett but the play was designed with options Aaron Murray right here the first thing he has to do he knows he's got a one on one but find the corner and then shift his eyes up to the inside watch Sharvin Bell the one guy goes short what does to Sharvin Bell do he holds now you know you got the other one on one if Bell would have dropped back you throw it so even the simplest of passes have options in case it isn't exactly there Murray read it correctly and he found Bennett for the touchdown Aaron Murray now has hit his last six in a row Carlton Thomas and Alexander Ogletree in the I formation. Ogletree is the fullback. He turns around and looks at uh, Carlton Thomas. Not much going in there. So it'll be second down now, 14 to 7. Uh, Aaron Murray. We talked about him at the beginning. He's been very impressive. Yeah, the worry all the time when you watch Aaron Murray is will he be hot? Will he be streaky? He's on target. I think last week's game really helped him. Auburn has not been able to run the ball. That seems to me to be the story of the game so far. They're playing good defense, but can they run the ball? Second down after the no game play. This is Thomas. Got a blocker, Tavares King, but before he can use the help from King, he's tackled by Nico Thorpe at the 40-yard line. That's a gain of 27. Well, Thomas did such a nice job of finding the seam on this one. Cuts it back, cuts it in. I think that was Ben Jones who got the block that time. Rolled back inside and just felt where the space was. And they have spotted the ball now at the 41. We see the even distribution offensively now. Ten runs, ten passes. Thomas Thorpe. Another big gain by 
Carlton Thomas. Well, how about Ben Jones, the senior center? I mean, when you do what he does, he gets blocked to one side to the left. Watch him come around this time and get another block to the right. Pulls, snaps, pulls, and throws. Wonderful job by your center, Ben Jones. And that's a gain of 19. Another first down this time just short of the Auburn 40-yard line. Saw Ben Jones out on the field before the game, Vern. Yes. He comes out in bare feet. <laughs> Full uniform, bare feet. You don't see that all the time. No, you don't. Uh oh Ball down. Go well. I was about to say, Crowell had not seen much action after he slipped and was tackled on the screen pass. And here is the fumble El Toro Freeman recovers. And it was wide open. He had the ability, and that was going to be a big play again and just drop the football. Look at that. Look at that hole he's got. He's going to gash it again for 8, 10 yards and just drops it. CBS Sports coverage of the Home Depot SEC will continue after this word from your local station. On the sideline after the fumble, Crowell getting some advice and comfort from Aaron Murray. Let's go down to uh, Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, good news. You see Georgia, Georgia senior cornerback Brandon Boykin back on the field. He was dealing with a right knee injury. They took him into the locker room briefly put a brace on him he was out here running on the sideline and as you see he is back on the field guys all right Tracy thank you first down 10 after only the fifth fumble lost this year well, well let me tell you from uh, playing a long time at quarterback mm -hmm. you throw in corners that come out with braces from the locker room I think you got to test that brace and see what they got that's pretty astute <laughs> it's not astute that's <laughs> you just uh, can you run or not all right had only lost three fumbles all year. Now, make it four. Quaddy Gathers recovered it. Well, Dyer tried this pitch. He got too close to McCaleb when he pitches it. See, that ball's in the air for about a foot and a half, and Gathers gathers it. And it was not in the center of McCaleb either, was it? Uh -uh. With that short of a pitch, you have to be very accurate, and it was not. So that didn't take long to even it up. Ontario McCaleb, number 23, two turnovers in seven seconds. Neither team known for dropping the football this year. Thomas, right side. Now well, let's go back to New York. Here's Adam Zucker in our New York studios. All right, thanks, Vern. We could have an undefeated in trouble here. Casey Paha for TCU connects with Brandon Carter for 75 yards. He also threw a 74-yard pass. They're up 14-7, and Gary, since Tim's not in studio, I'll just tell you his fly in the ointment is in trouble. <laughs> uh, well, TCU has really improved, I think, from the beginning of the year. Well, they lost to Baylor, if you remember, back in September. And... Uh, how about that? Second down here, 14-7. Little play fake. Getting out on the edge to Malcolm Mitchell. Brought down, but not until he got a huge gain. 16 yards. Well, Boise State, you heard Adam say they might be in trouble. Go to Facebook.com to vote. Here's our CBS poll question. Should an undefeated Boise State Play for the national championship instead of a one-loss team from the BCS conference. I'll give you the info again. Here's Thomas trying to shake loose. He can't. He gets to the 24. Go to Facebook.com SEC on CBS if you'd like to vote. You want to weigh in on this one? Ah. Uh yeah, or this is a rather? tough one, though, I, okay. I do have to admit. I mean, it depends a lot on what Georgia does the rest of the way here. They okay. get to it, and I still think it's going to be hard for them to pass a one-loss team. I don't even know if Oklahoma State's going to lose, though. Exactly, honest. not the way they're—oh, my gosh. Might be mute.
They threaded Texas Tech today. Here's Murray. He's got a man. Oh, my goodness. Made the tough one, dropped the one in his hands. I wonder if it was tipped. Whitehead. You know, I thought this ball deserved to go a little higher with a little more air underneath it. And when it didn't, it allowed it ball to be tipped on the play. Yep. Whitehead, Jermaine Whitehead, a freshman, defending. Third down. Jones over the ball at center. Third and 11. Murray being chased, gets around the corner. A lot of room, and he runs out of bounds near the 10 with the first and 10 for the Bulldogs of Georgia. Well, there, as we talked about, because of injuries and inexperience in this league, there's not a lot of quarterbacks that are winning games on their own. Last time, he just ran away from the rush and got there the first down with his legs. Uh, you know, when you got a quarterback as hot as he is, Murray, 9 for 12, and he's picking up first downs with his feet. Mm. Tough combination. That was a 14-yard gain on third and 11, and that was movement by Orson Charles. And, uh, Number seven. Flags in the multiple on the numbers. Oh, they called it on Remains Jones. First down. Hmm. And that's six for six on third down in this game. Six for six. Well, you see the graphic on Murray now in the midst of toward the end of his sophomore year and 0 and 5 against ranked opponents. And yes, Auburn is number 24 this week. Murray, oh goodness, rumbling to the end zone. Bruce Figgins. the senior this season. Well, I tell you, Mike Bobo, when you call a play like this, and Auburn had to bust, they brought two linebackers from the same side. One of those two guys has to cover the fullback. Neither peeled off. That was a gift touchdown. Blair Walsh will attempt this extra point. Drew Butler is the holder. And he cuts it inside the right upright. Yeah, I think it was Arturo Freeman, number 21, that needed to peel off. Not sure, you never know. But watch, you're going to come here from the outside, and I think Freeman has to come over and cover the tight end, the fullback, excuse me. Now watch, one guy comes from the outside. Freeman, who's been making a lot of tackles, forgets to get his man, and it's a walk-in. Aaron Murray throws another touchdown pass. Georgia has scored 21. Aaron Murray throws another touchdown pass, 10 of 13 now. Three TDs, 153 yards. Slap the umpire on the back. That is his 26th of the year, a new Georgia record. He surpasses Matthew Stafford, who set the mark of 25 in 2008. Yeah, and Aaron Murray may send the bus to play Auburn every year. Four touchdown passes last year, three already in the game this year. That's seven in two years. He likes to look at those uniforms. And if you'll remember at one point in the game last year down in Auburn, the score was Georgia 21, Auburn 7. Worth mentioning now that Cam Newton is playing at a higher level. More starters on the field. Yeah. Well, Aaron Murray, when you've got a hot quarterback, running the ball just enough, enough experience, placing the ball where it needs to be placed, first down throws, and when it's not there, he picks up the sixth, third down conversion with his legs, and then Mike Bobo comes up with a great call, a pitch and catch for his third touchdown pass so far in this game. Kyle Fraser has come in at quarterback now. He runs much more than he passes for the Auburn Tigers. Where's number 10? He'll hand it off to Michael Dyer, who's not been a force in this ballgame. 
And uh, Kyle Frazier in for one. Heads back out. And Clint Mosley, number 15. The redshirt sophomore is back on the field. Mosley with that tough start, six sacks against LSU, but then came back four touchdowns in Auburn's most recent game, a win at Ole Miss. Second down, seven. Blitz. Mosley has to get rid of it much, much earlier than he had hoped. And then he gets popped by Garrison Smith, number 56. Just a different looking Georgia defense. Uh huh. Todd Graham, this is his second year. He's retooled the players. They understand it. They're bigger. They come off the edge. They have size at linebacker and outside defensive end to rush the passer. Three wide right, third and seven. Oh, Mosley bobbled it. Fires it out, intercepted. Picked off by Bakari Rambo. Looks for a block. Got one. Touchdown, Bulldogs. flag I'm guessing excessive celebration but that's only because it took a while for the flag to be thrown Tom Ritter could this be after the touchdown the unsportsmanlike conduct against Georgia so it is not the taunting rule which negated the no, touchdown no, no, no. earlier. This was after yep. the touchdown. You know, Mosley, this was a perfect snap, but he bobbled it. And when he took his eyes off the secondary, he guessed. He guessed wrong. Mm. Rambo now with his seventh interception of the season. First return for a touchdown. Brandon Bogote with the interception of Clint Mosley's pass. And it was Jarvis Jones that'll put the pressure. Watch him bobble it. Puts his eyes down for a second. That's all it takes. Now Jarvis Jones is going to come up and he fails to see. Now he thinks it's two deep set safeties. He's thinking they're playing too deep. They're not. They're playing combo. Watch. He comes and jumps the route. I thought he was just going to go to the left and run in. And Sean Williams, number 36, got the last block to spring him that time. But boy, that is deadly. Take your eyes off downfield, and then Rambo jumps the route, and all of a sudden, it's almost looking like a runaway. All right, Adam, thank you. Celebration continues here after the second touchdown in 55 seconds, both off turnovers. And after the celebration penalty, the ball will be kicked off from the 15. Rambo, second in the country with numbers of interceptions. At the 15-yard line, Trey Mason, number 21, taken down 35-yard line. Somewhat uh, eerily similar to the LSU game, Vern. Remember the kickoff fumble? Uh, Auburn's in the game. They fumble. LSU scores. And then Mosley throws an interception to Brooks just mm -hmm. shortly thereafter. Here you go. Two turnovers in 55 seconds. The same thing happens again. That's Costa Vavlos, one of the gunners on the special teams. And they're uh, paying attention to his left knee. Well, that looked innocent, didn't it? Sure did. Sure did. And uh, Bablas is still down, number 48. Well, how does Auburn climb back in the game? Uh, you know, it's one sack in the game so far for Georgia, but minus 10 yards rushing for mm -hmm. Auburn. Okay, now that doesn't mean, you know, usually you get minus yards, there's six, seven sacks to, uh, to give you the minus. But in this case, Auburn, the inability to run the ball at all, that seems to be too much pressure on Clint Mosley against this outstanding front rush by Georgia and the 
the secondary, a very senior veteran uh, uh, secondary for Georgia. Well, Heisman hopefuls, this is an arbitrary list, of course, but look in the lower right side, Brandon Whedon. 357 yards, five touchdowns today against uh, an obviously porous Texas Tech defense. Tommy Tuberville, of course, out in Lubbock now, the former coach at Auburn. And Mosley's back out there. Carr, here's the handoff to Dyer. Dyer, whoa. And that, uh, this is called Segway, <laughs> right? You go from one to the Aflac Duck, who was the oldest player to win the Heisman Trophy. Brandon Whedon, I think most of you know who follow the sport, that he uh, played a number of years minor league baseball. Now the line judge calls time. Yeah, I think they only had 10 men on the field, Georgia did. Timeout. Georgia is their first charge timeout of this half. And they uh, take the time with 9-12 to go. And a 28-7 lead. Aaron Murray's putting on quite a show. This was a touchdown by Figgins. He's thrown for two more. And then Bakari Rambo. What a great name. Moments ago, on your left, Joe Tarashinsky. Long-time member of the staff here. Yeah, he retooled the uh, strength and training program for Georgia. Mark Rick not happy with all those fourth-quarter losses last year. And uh, to a man, the players have said, we've worked really hard. <laughs> we want to finish this thing off in Atlanta. Dyer. Not much. Avery Jones, number 93. John Jenkins was also there. And it'll be third down. Yeah, interesting play here. Third and very a medium, and they take Lutzenkirk it off the field. Emery Blake is top of the screen. Pump fake once. Mosley almost dropped it when he was hit from behind by Christian Robinson. He did hold on, but Robinson gets the sack. Uh, I, I'll tell you, Georgia has the athletes on defense now. And they can rush the passer. You have to be able to run on them. Are they going to come with these athletes off the edge? You cannot be one-dimensional. This is playing against an elite defense now. When you're playing against this Georgia defense, you better be able to keep them honest because they've got people and athletes coming just like the big guys. Stephen Clark on for his second punt of the first half. Brandon Boykin is the deep man, man on this one. Nice and high again. And uh, Boykin with a fair catch. Let's go back to the studio for a John Hancock update. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, Vern, thanks for going back and forth in Boise. TCU's Casey Paul, three long touchdown passes, two of them to Josh Boyce, 69 yards, 74 yards, and 75 yards. They did miss the extra point, but putting Boise's 35-game home winning streak at risk. Vern and Gary. All right, Adam, thank you for the update. We'll, uh, we'll be in touch yeah. throughout. First down 10 after that uh, very nice punt. Murray, look at that. Three touchdowns already. Thomas, eight for 57. And Thomas getting a lot of playing time now. We've got no uh, word that Crowell was injured. Uh, Crowell is back there right now. Murray. Tavares King did it again, didn't they? Uh, you, you just have to do a better job than that when you're a defensive back. Charvin Bell knows he's got him all over the field when he stops you gotta stop took his eye off him too quickly you've got to have not only coverage but good eye contact with the receiver you can't let them have those big plays on underthrown cheap balls seven and a half to go before halftime Crowell. 
that should be a first down. Well, Georgia watching. Well, I don't think they were watching, but they certainly heard that South Carolina outlasted Florida earlier this afternoon on CBS. So Georgia in control of their own fate. They must win this and they must win against Kentucky. And if they do, they will be in Atlanta as the SEC East champions. If they stumble either in this game or against Kentucky, and South Carolina can get there. Thomas is back on the field. To the 20 yard line. You know, the thing about Georgia this year is you're just not sure. Right. You know, you watch them with your eyes, but you look at see who they did not play in the West. They did not play this year because of schedule. They didn't play Arkansas. They didn't play LSU. They didn't play Alabama. So now they got to do it and win it and prove it. And if they get somebody, they'll get them in the SEC championship. Mm -hmm. Tennessee, in contrast, had LSU and Alabama back to back weeks. Florida can talk about their experience with LSU and Alabama back to back. And of course, uh, the whole West is still to be determined. Thomas going left. Flag is down. Georgia's schedule now. Obviously, six minutes to go in the first half here as Thomas picks it up and the flag is down. See, they lost to Boise State. Interesting now, Gary, yesterday when we talked to Aaron Murray, and Aaron White, Jarvis Jones. How good do you think Boise State is? Remember what Aaron Murray said? Awesome. Yeah, he liked the way they played. Of course, they questioned whether they could do it in the long run in this right, conference. Right. But they said they're a real team and could beat anybody in one game. I agree with that. But looking at that schedule, what pops out, remember, the dominance of the West over the East. You know, the, the West, I mean, you're 5 and 11, the East is against the West. The five wins all against the state of Mississippi. Mississippi and Mississippi State. No one 0 and 10 against LSU, Alabama, Arkansas, and Auburn. Here's one of the games still yet to be decided. Thomas. Of course, no you didn't go out for dinner last night. No, no, night. You of course. Did your homework? Well, one of those, but I was yeah. watching a basketball game too. <laughs> on the carrier, that was good. Okay. You know, also Tennessee and Arkansas are going to play today, and right. that's one that. You know, Arkansas needs to stay alive if they have any hope of getting to Atlanta. Uh, Mark Rick said his team, uh, he, he thought even in the aftermath of the back-to-back -back losses Boise State and South Carolina that he had the ingredients for a good squad if they stayed together, and they obviously did. Six for six on third down. This is their seventh. Murray, back up, got it again. Mitchell, touchdown. Four touchdown tosses for Murray today. That one 25 yards. And it's the same formula. You know, this is going to take Auburn completely out of man-to-man -man coverage. You have help deep on this play. The ball is underthrown, and you get a touchdown out of it. And seven for seven on third down. Blair Walsh with the extra point. Up and good. Well, last week, Aaron Murray threw five TD passes in the second quarter. That was against New Mexico State. Yeah, last time it was Bell. This time it was Chris Davis. This time Chris Davis should have known he had a safety behind him. No reason to overrun it. But he did. And this one is getting out of control for Auburn. Beautiful Sanford Stadium in the heart of the University of Georgia campus. And uh, these folks dressed in red enjoying themselves this afternoon, 35-7. And uh, Walsh will kick off now for the Georgia Bulldogs. Ontario McCaleb at the one. Out to the 27. Let's take another look at Murray to Mitchell. You know, if you're a defensive coordinator and you have to help your corners down here, you do it with the safety. Now watch. Ted Roof has dialed up help for the corner. He's got a safety and double covering to the top. 
under throw, beats both of them. Now, what do you do if you're Ted Roof? Okay, you cover them with one guy, you cover them with zone, you cover them man to man, you double cover them, they score all four different ways. Not a lot on that grease board that's going to no. answer. There's not much left. No, there's not. <laughs> there truly isn't. First down and 10. Mosley, option play. And Caleb spilled. Oh, boy. Watch out again. It's dangerous down there with uh, guys coming out of bounds in a hurry. Bakari Rambo, who has a touchdown on the interception. Yeah, now remember this. If you're an Auburn fan, what it was five six seven minutes ago they recovered that fumble mm -hmm. since then has been all downhill yeah. fumbled it right back and a disaster 14 to 7 at the time you get the ball around midfield and look what happened on second down Mosley steps up almost picked off again it was incomplete intended for McCaleb juggling the ball well, the turnovers for the Tigers. This was on the attempted reverse. Here's Rambo. Took the long, circuitous route to the end zone, but he got there. Third and nine. Flags. 12 men in the huddle, probably, right? Constitution infraction on the offense. 12 players in there. And it's time to cue the duck once more. There he is. Who was the oldest player to win the Heisman Trophy? Chris Weinke, Florida State in 2000. He was another of those who had played baseball. And Mark Richt was the offensive coordinator and Weinke's coach. Chris has, uh, Chris has really carved out a niche as a quarterback coach. He coached Cam Newton, got him ready for the draft. It'll be fourth down. That's the sophomore, Alec Ogletree, missed five games with a broken right foot. And Ogletree is one of the guys that Todd Grantham said can play inside or outside. Remember, they lost Ogletree against Boise State. Really made a big difference in that football game. Now Stephen Clark on to punt again. 3.52, clock winding down. 35-7. Fair catch, Boykin grabs it. Tough outing for Mosley now, 7 of 13. Picked off once, that was returned by Rambo for a touchdown. Boy, it really did all go south for Auburn on that after the fumble. Sure did. Fumbled it right back to him on first down, trying to run a tricky reverse play, and he didn't execute it. Murray still has it. Now Michael Bennett has it. Murray's pass to Charvin Bell makes the tackle. Tell you, the Georgia team, when Murray is executing like this, can give any defense in college a run for their money. They've got four or five different receivers. They've got two tight ends, a fullback that can catch the ball. They have a lot of options to stop. Out of spread, second down and seven. Thomas, it is Thomas who's still out there. Bennett in the slot, Tavares King. Top of the screen and Mitchell runs the deep route in the middle. Murray, oh my goodness, I'm not so sure how wise that was. I, I think he just fumbled it. Do you really? I, mean, I don't think he was trying to pitch this one. Corey Lemonier is the guy who got there and Aaron White, number 81. That's a bad matchup right there. Aaron White right on the best. And he, you know, he was just trying to get move and get away from Lemonier, and he couldn't. Aaron White is the second time at time uh, tight end. I beg your pardon, a senior, and he actually spoke representing the students at the graduation ceremonies in December. And most notorious now <laughs> for catching a touchdown last week and winding up in the hedges. 
we're going to have a scoop if they pick up this one. I'll tell you that on third down. Nope. Well, and we got a penalty at the top of the screen too. Last week, Aaron White, his first touchdown at home as a senior, said he got right here, looked at the xylophone, and said, whoops, and wound up in the hedges. Now, Michael Bennett came over to try and help him out, and White said, those things are tough in there. And he, he was snagged. There's a hole in the back of his jersey, and Bennett trying to help him out. And at long last, there you go. Damaged. Yes. Fun guy. He's the one who said about Boise State. I thought it was a great analogy. He said, if you play Michael Jordan in basketball 10 games, he's going to beat you 10 times. But if you're in a one shot, you mean one shot, one against shot right. against uh, against Michael Jordan, well, you'll, you'll probably you'll lose. But that's <laughs> I get it. Yeah, the analogy. I agree. Was, I agree. Yeah, you're uh -huh. not going to beat him over the long run. That's the point. That's true. Well. It's third and 20. Georgia should want to punt the football. Run it again, punt it. They're listening. So the first time now. Yeah, Auburn should take their last time out. They've got one left. And they do. And they do. Final timeout call by the Auburn Tigers. 123 to go. Now Red Lobster presents today's scholar athlete. It's Ty Frisk Fricks from Georgia, majoring in biological engineering with a 3.72 GPA. Also a volunteer, Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future, shown today by donating $1,000 to the University of Georgia's General Scholarship Fund. Of course, he snaps back to Drew Butler, go back a generation. On your left, Drew Butler's dad, Kevin, All-American place kicker. On your right, Mitch Fritz, who was his snapper, 81 and 82. There's son and son. Saw Kevin on the field before the game. Did you now? Very proud, Dad. Very proud of George. Think this is the. He was very complimentary to this Georgia football team. Really thinks they got something special here. Well, his son Drew is about to punt for the first time in this game, and uh, previous winner of the Ray Guy Award. Now punt coverage has uh -oh. been. Oh boy. Set all that up. Yes, there you are. Side of the foot. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> that one. Uh, they barely got a first down. On, a, on the punt just past the 40 yard line. You know, we saw him uh, shank one in the Florida game. He's got a 44 yard average. That one was for 17. Geico halftime report coming up. Adam Zucker, Aaron Taylor in our studios in New York today. And we'll be going back there shortly. 117 to go. 17 yard punt. Well, this is Auburn's chance to get back in the football game. If they ever are, they have to score here and remember they get the ball to start the second half. They could put two touch. It's four down territory. You got to believe that. Put two touchdowns up in these next two drives. Mosley, uh, you got to get rid of the ball. Clint. Jarvis Jones. That's just too long. You got to have that clock in your head. First down, four down territory. Jarvis Jones is eventually going to get you. Just throw it away. That's nine sacks for Jarvis Jones this year. Four of them came against Florida. Well, they almost mixed up uh, the handoff, and Michaela does get out of bounds. 44 seconds remaining. Sean Williams ran him out of bounds. Such an interesting story about Jarvis Jones. Ruled ineligible by USC with a neck injury. They ruled him he could not play football. Called back, got his own doctors, got cleared to play, called Mark Rick, became a Georgia Bulldog. Now, he's from Columbus. And he started, or he played, he didn't start. He played nine games at Southern California in 09 and then suffered the neck injury, was told that's it. And got a second chance. Sat out last year. Mosley, quarterback, dead. Got him again. 
This time it's John Jenkins. Wow, I, I'm, I'm surprised that Mark Rick took a timeout here. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Well, let's uh, revisit Jarvis Jones and the, the stellar game that he had in that Florida outing. Yeah, he had a kind of a sitting duck in John Brantley in the game, but he sure got to him, didn't he? I mean, he abused the tackles for Florida all night. Now, I think what Mark Rick was doing here, he's going to say, okay, they're going to throw the big bang to the end zone, okay? okay. So he wanted to go over his group that's going to be out there and not let one of those last second passes, instead of just leaving his defense out there, he wanted to go over with his group what's going to happen. And so on fourth down, a need of 15, 33 seconds to go. Mosley and the Auburn Tigers come back on the field. Incomplete. Intended for Ontario McCaleb that goes over on downs with 29 seconds to go. Well, and with Malcolm Mitchell and Connolly and Bennett, and the way they remember he told us in practice that Walsh and Bogate made 59 yard field goals. That's right. God, Mark Rick is getting greedy as he's still. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm throwing the ball deep. I mean, they have receivers that have just abused the defensive backs and still one timeout left. Ball at the 46. Murray, 13 of 16, four touchdowns in the first half. Mitchell to the bottom, King to the top. will run it scampers out of bounds at the 42 yard line just enough deep zone by Auburn feels the pressure makes a positive play out of it for the first down for a 59 yard field goal well, they need about 15 yards about that Mark was telling us he set up a competition because Blair Walsh, his senior place kicker, having a tough year. So Walsh nailed a 59 yarder earlier in the week in practice, and Bogate came on right after him, and he hit one from 59. Murray, Chow, watch out. Behind. Yeah, there's the fumble. So they're right there. I mean, this would be a long one. It'd be, I guess they could try a 60 yarder right now if they wanted to, so they still have opportunities. Lemonier. Lemonier makes a lot of plays, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he does. really he really does. He's... Clock will start. George is gonna have to take a timeout. Yeah, they are. Blair Walsh and Bogate, the two place kickers. Look, if Kevin Butler's here, get him out. Right. <laughs> I wonder whose turn it is. I've lost track, quite <laughs> frankly. I'm waiting to see who will come out there. All right, second down. Channel my inner Nick Saban. Yeah, now it. remember, right. if you're going to throw now without a timeout, uh, you need to throw for a first down. Right. Or near the sideline. A first down would allow you to go up there and crown the ball and get a field goal try. Of course, near the sideline would give you five yards and a 55-yarder, I guess. Murray, that's going to be it. Nothing went right on that one. So what? we've reached halftime. But you know, Vern, nothing went wrong either. True. <laughs> An explosive second quarter for Aaron Murray and the Georgia Bulldogs. Let's go down to Tracy, who is with Gene Chiswick.
Coach, you're going to come out here in the second half and try and chip away at this lead. Where do you start? You start right now with being able to control the outside passing vertical game. That's what that's where it starts. We're, we're okay on the run game. The outside vertical passing game right now is what we just can't stop them on, and we got to do something at halftime to get that done. And then offensively, just all the way around, it's bad. We've had one good drive. We can't protect the quarterback. We're not running the ball very good right now, so we got to figure out what to do there, too. Thanks a lot. Vern? Thank you, Tracy. Bruce Figgins, one of the touchdowns. That's the end of the half, 35-7. Let's go back to Adam Zucker in our studios in New York. Played in 1892, 1898, and since 1898, the only interruptions in this in the games played in this rivalry caused by World War One, 17 and 18, and World War II in 1943. Moments ago, Tracy Wilson with Coach Mark Rick. Coach, an impressive first half. What were you most impressed about? You want to know the truth? Q Harrell's uh, Q Harrell's tackle, Quint, uh, Quintavious Harrell's tackle on that I think second kickoff when he came down there and knocked that guy back. That's what I was most impressed with. Really? Yes. How about Aaron Murray though and his performance tonight so far? Four touchdowns already in this first half. Well, it's it's, it's the first half. We got to play the whole game. You, you had a lead against Auburn last year and you let it slip away. Did you bring that up in the locker room? No, I didn't. I just told him to keep doing everything that got us here. That's all. Thanks a lot. All right, Tracy, thank you. I was impressed with that hit on that kickoff, too, to tell you the My truth. My goodness. I was glad that Mark was searching for his full name. Yes. And he found it. <laughs> Reminded me of me. Here we go, third quarter. Ooh, Bogate plants this one. Uh, I thought about it. Did Caleb. Well, 35-7, I talked to Lauren Smith, who's been around here forever and ever, Gary, and he said that's by far the most impressive first half they've played all year. Well, you know, Auburn is dependent with their offense to be able to run the ball a little bit. I mean, when you run for 315 a year ago and minus yards in the first half, this offense is built on running and play-action passes. They got nothing. If you can't run the ball, they got nothing. And the secondary, Gene Chiswick, was right. Throwing the ball up for grabs, and your defensive backs have not been able to turn around and bat one down, not even one. And so they attempt to come back, trailing 35 7. Here's Mosley to Dyer. That's a positive start. Michael Dyer with the longest run from scrimmage tonight. Brandon Boykin finally uh, made the tackle. Well, and, and I think if you're Gene Chiswick, you go, come on, we got to go do what we do. Let's forget the score here. Um, if we get back in the game, we get back in the game. But let's run our offense. Let's take care of the little things and then just look at the clock and the scoreboard at the end of the game. McCaleb is down back between the 10 and 15 yard lines. Ontario McCaleb, the running back. See if we can find out what happened. He's right here. I think he's going to perform the block right there. Well, the block got performed on him, didn't it? Mm-hmm. Ogletree again. Ogletree, huh? the middle yeah, linebacker. I, I'm telling you, they're big. See, he lines up to the outside this time. He's all over the field, and McCaleb's about 175 pounds, and Ogletree's about 240. Caleb will be back. We saw him yep. get toasted against LSU and he came back too. Now Michael Dyer a 16 yard run to open the uh, play from scrimmage and uh, he went over a thousand yards now and joins three other illustrious running backs in Auburn history Brooks Davis and Carnell Williams back to back 1000 yard seasons. You know who's not there. 
Bo knows who. Bo knows. First down and ten. Rich Green right side. Not much. Emery Blake with his fifth catch tonight. And Sanders Cummings, number 19, makes the makes the tackle. Second down eight. Georgia brings four defensively. That one, Blake. What a pass rush that time. Cornelius Washington led the way, number 83. Halftime trends, Gary. Aaron Murray. And that, that doesn't even talk about his scrambles that he made first downs on. He had a tremendous first half. There's the story about not being able to run the ball and a pick six on top of all that offense. That's how you get 35 points. Third and eight. Lutzen Kirkin sets up to the right side. Pressure is on. Oh Mosley got popped as he let it go. Wow. And that could have been intercepted for a touchdown again. Cummings. This is on a screen pass. So you got to get rid of it. Both ways. Look one way. Throw it the other way. And oh. I'm telling you, this front four, five, six, seven, that time it was Washington and could have been another pick six by Cummings. Sanders Cummings, who plays all four positions in the defensive secondary of Caldecon. And here is the punt from Stephen Clark. This time it's Brandon Boykin back. Fair catch at the 17, perhaps the 18-yard line. A 43-yard punt. Nothing on return. This is the interim Uga. Interim. His name is Russ. Georgia's senior Aaron White, a tight end. He is the focus of Sonics celebrating creativity in the SEC. For more. Here's Tracy. Well, thanks, Vern. We celebrate the senior from Columbia, Missouri. He graduated last year with a management degree, spoke at his commencement ceremony, and was named to the SEC academic role every year at Georgia. On the field, it's been quite a few weeks for White. For the first time as a player, White was able to say he defeated Florida, and he celebrated in style. Then this past week against New Mexico State, White caught his first touchdown pass at Sanford Stadium, but that celebration had to wait because he was stuck in the hedges. It was a split-second decision, you know, to, to jump that xylophone, and, and when I hit the, the bushes, I was like, man, I kind of ruined my first touchdown because now I'm stuck. I can't even get up. And it's like, it's kind of ruined, but it ended up just making it that much more memorable, and, you know, it's brought some more publicity to Georgia, so anytime that happens, you know, I can't be mad at that. I don't know, Vern, but that footage is hilarious. I can watch that one over and over. You know, it is, it is going to replace, I hope, the footage of Gary and me dancing in the booth four years Tony, ago. Tony, bring that up. Yeah, uh, it's been brought up about five yeah, times. Yeah, 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 yeah. Aaron White, terrific. Uh, he said he'd practiced that pom pom move a few years ago at Georgia Tech uh -huh. when they won. Interesting. No Isaiah Crowell to start the half. White being chased. Oh my gosh. Oh wow. Yeah, Murray's got to be careful. He's got to stay upright. Darren Bates. Yes, Darren Bates. I mean, nobody there. Slide. If you have to. You can't make it out of bounds. He's too valuable to take hits like that. You're trying to win the SEC championship. They need, need him to finish this thing off. Well, he appears just fine. Second down and ten. Hand off. Thomas, just watching that, Gary, it, it brings to mind uh, as a junior, in the sixth year of his junior year, Aaron Murray suffered a broken leg. He vowed he wanted to get back before the playoffs. He somehow did that and led his team to uh, a state championship. So toughness never an issue, but uh, maybe wiser to right. feet first. Well, especially his team needs him. 
I mean, you know, they want they want him healthy if they get to Atlanta. They got to have him. Third and seven. Shot clock or game clock. Listen to me. Now it's five. Oh boy. Jeez. Oh boy. Thomas Thorpe with the tackle. I'll tell you that offensive line, Glenn Gates, Jones, the left side. I mean, they're just gashing them. Faking it, coming around the outside to follow Big Gates. Tough. That's kind of tough when you, you know, you're trying up there with that defensive line. You're saying, come on, we want to get the ball back, and they gash you like that for 20, what, 25 yards on that Yes, play? it was 25. He's got 99 on 11 carries. Here's Crowell. There you go. A little hurdle, a little stiff arm, and a big first down. Isaiah Crowell had to watch Richard Samuel do stuff just like that against Florida. Now that's a downhill tailback given the play at the point of attack what it deserves. When he learns to do that, then all his other skills will take over from there. Crowell out of uh, Carver High School in Columbus. His high school teammate Gabe Wright started at defensive tackle for Auburn tonight. And uh, four seconds on the shot clock. Murray Bennett breaks the tackle. Well, Crowell and Gabe Wright uh, signing day. They were both highly sought recruits. Here was the scene. That's uh, Crowell on the left. Who are you going to go with? Good, uh Georgia. How about you, Gabe Wright? Well, after we see. I'm playing my football at the University of Auburn. High school teammates. And there is Gabe Wright, both true freshmen now, deep into their first seasons at their respective schools. Crowell, the deep back in the eye. Crowell. Well, he was suspended. He and two teammates were suspended for one game, and he apologized to the fans. I just want to say I made a mistake. It'll never happen again. Apologize to my family, fans, Bulldog Nation. I just want to come out and prove to the fans that they can trust me. It showed me what I had at stake and what could happen to me. I really like Mike Bobo here going to Crowell. He knows he needs him in the future. He's going to need him, obviously. Kentucky, Georgia Tech. He's telling them, listen, we got a lot of competition around here. You got to run it the way we do. We understand you got all this talent, but run it downhill first. And so there it is again. Bingo twice inside the 10. A, a light could be going on for this young man. He's extremely gifted. Now follow the blocker, press the hole, and then show your ability with the cutback. Beautiful. And he's picked up 55 yards on 10 carries. Gets uh, the handoff again this time. Oh, and a flag down. DeSharvin Bell, number 22, was the first man there. Yeah, good job that time for the Auburn defensive line. They bounced it outside, and Bell made the play at the cornerback spot. During the run, holding number 79 offense, 10 yard penalty, replay first down. That's on Justin Anderson, the right tackle. Well, Aaron Samuel, 97 yards. These are true freshmen. Malcolm Brown of Texas had rounded off to 91, and Crowell, 86. Thomas has rushed for 99 yards tonight, and Crowell for 55. First and goal now at the 20 yard line. Orson Charles has been quiet here. Why don't you run one of those play action passes to him? Crowell. Chris Davis trying to rip the football out. And Orson Charles will get into the fray as an aid. 
See Xander Ogletree, number 46. He's a fraternal twin of Alec Ogletree. They were separated by two minutes at birth. And uh, Xander Ogletree is only 5'10. His fraternal twin is 6'3. <laughs> hmm. Thus the fraternal part of it. Yeah, well, that's why the emphasis <laughs> is right there. You got it. Time of possession 24 minutes to just over 12. Carlton Thomas is on now looking for a 100 yard game. Play fake, Murray. Incomplete. Yeah, Orson Charles, they wanted to go to the tight end, but he was jammed at the line of scrimmage that time and never got out. Thus, the ball had to be dumped. Watch Charles over here. Watch him get jammed on the play. Boom, doesn't get off the line of scrimmage too long, and Aaron Murray has to get rid of the ball. And so third and goal. Georgia, an amazing eight of nine on third down conversions tonight. Well, you know you got the back shoulder throw. Do you try something else just to try something else? <laughs> well, let's put it on the ground and uh, come right. So now we'll have the field goal unit come on. Will it be Bogate or Walsh? Gene Chiswick on the far side. Bogate, who kicked four extra points in last week's win, will get a chance to try his first field goal of the season. He's a senior out of San Diego, California. Brandon Bogate. Drew Butler will hold. Got it. 26 yards. Right down the middle. Well, this drive for the field goal. These guys were hoping for a 9-6 overtime game. Ogletree. Oga. Welcome back to Sanford Stadium, Athens, Georgia. The scoring drive for the Bulldogs. 73 yards, 11 plays. And it took six minutes and 15 seconds. 65 on the ground. In the background, looked like the Tiger was exhausted over there. Blair Walsh will kick off. And that uh, part of this special teams has been very effective tonight. Following our post-game show on CBS, Gary Danielson discusses this game and answers your questions live from the SEC on CBS Cruiser. Watch the fifth quarter at cbssports.com slash Gary. And Tony Barnhart will be with us. Ah, excellent. Yes. Mr. SEC. Yes, he will. Get him to take a stand on the rematch, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's dangerous territory. I can tell you that. Here's Mosley. Dyer coming left. And all down. Let's go back to the studio for this John Cat Honcat update. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, Vern, after trailing by six at the half, Boise State is now on top. D.J. Harper, his second score of the day. They lead by eight, and Gary, Tim told me to tell you, the fly is still buzzing. I bet he didn't put it that briefly, Adam. Yeah, that's right. Took him a while. Second and four. Nothing. At the 25. You know, how important is Michael Dyer to this offense, Vern? 31% of the total offense goes through Michael Dyer this year. That's the most it's in the last 10 years. The closest in the last 10 years, Kenny Irons in 19, 2005, 29%. Georgia is stopping Dyer. Nine attempts, 26 yards. Thus, stopping the offense. And now on third down, Mosley in the spread has McCaleb back on the field. Low snap again, controlled by Mosley this time. And down the right side it goes. Is that Blake? Yes, it is. Beautiful play. Emory Blake, brilliant. You know, Blake is not a burner, 
but he sure can adjust to the ball, feel for it. It's like a, a center fielder knows exactly where it's going to come down. Gave just a bit of a shove to Brandon Smith, but he did it without anybody being able to see it. And here's the uh, hurry up offense, and Dyer gets the handoff. Blake now. Six receptions, 101 yards for the young man from Austin. And again, they'll try and snap it quickly. Second down and one. Dyer picks up the first down inside the throw. Oh, is there a fumble? It came out. There is indeed. I think Ogletree came around the corner. I don't know if he got his hand on the ball or not. Watch Ogletree right here. I think he popped it out. I think that's who got it from around the corner. And then Gilliard fell on it, wasn't yeah. it, 35? There you are. And then yes, Gilliard it is Ogletree. Yes. See, Ogletree's the inside linebacker, but he lines up all over the th field. Todd Grantham really showing that this defense has a lot of ways to go. That is not Todd Grantham. <laughs> Thirty-eight seven, late third quarter. Remember how we began this afternoon with the F-16 flyover? So impressive as they came over Sanford Stadium. And we mentioned that there were two brothers involved in the team. On your left is Captain Mike McGinn, Georgia, class of 98. On your right, his brother, Pat McGinn, Auburn, class of 83. I think the captain on the left is happier than the captain on the right. Yeah, I guess. And if you're Gene Chizik, you're not happy at all. Remember Auburn's first drive? Eight plays, 76 yards for a TD. Vern, since then, Auburn has run 29 plays, 83 yards, three turnovers. Disaster. High formation on first down. This is Crowell. It is. Those tough, dirty runs that are so important in the SEC. Corey Lemonier, number 55 for the Tigers made the made the stop. 12 for 69 now for Crowell. There's Lemonier, young man whose parents were uh, born and raised in Haiti. Leads the Auburn Tigers in sacks with six. Aaron Murray. Ogletree, Crowell behind him. Orson Charles tight to the right. That's Malcolm Mitchell in the slot to the left. Tavares King farther outside. And again, they will test the middle. It's Crowell. Crowell. I'll tell you that Canarius Gates, number 72. Remember, um, Dallas Lee broke his leg against Florida. Gates came in. They are following Gates, pulling around with that power play over and over again. Gates was a part-time starter, now full-time because Dallas Lee is gone. And look at Murray. Leans out. And that might be the one, you know, another of the worry parts of this Georgia football team. Really, there's six offensive linemen they have. Ben Jones is the next tackle, the center, if they get an injury. Got the first down. Georgia now 9 of 11 on third down conversions. Georgia's already playing the clock. Right? They sure are. Yeah. Snap comes with two seconds left. And Crowell. Another positive play. Yeah. Now let's go to the studio for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, thanks, Vern. And one of the guys we're watching, Russell Wilson. He's 16 of 17 with four touchdown passes. Wisconsin all over Minnesota right now, trying to win out and take the leaders' division. Tonight we'll see Andrew Luck, the biggest game of his career, trying to avenge last year's loss to Oregon and get Stanford to 10 and 0 for the first time since 1940. And Trent Richardson will go up against Mississippi State tonight. He's the SEC leader in rushing yards and rushing touchdowns. Vern. Adam, thank you. And here we've got a 38 to 7 score. This was 14 to 7 midway through the second quarter. And a fumble after a fumble recovery by Auburn. It was McCaleb and Dyer on the exchange on a reverse, and things just dissipated. 
Carlton Thomas with the carry then, number 30. Well, we talked a lot about the SEC East and how Georgia controls its own destiny out west. LSU in that big win a week ago tonight in overtime over Alabama. So uh, LSU undefeated, number one in the country. Alabama, interestingly, I thought, third in the BCS standings after the loss. And, of course, Alabama still has and, Auburn left. And Arkansas still alive. They're not, you know, they're not killing anybody. They're getting healthier. Jake Beckett's back. Chris Childs, their receiver, Greg Childs, a receiver, getting more healthy. Very interesting. What if they beat LSU last game? What happens? Mm. Thomas, well, should they do that? Everybody else wins out till then. They all just have one loss. Oh, my goodness. We go to the seventh tiebreaker. And that's the highest BCA ranking, and there's a big however. If two teams are within five spots of which, each which other. Which they will be. Yes. Then the title is decided by head-to-head -head results. And just think about that. Alabama has played the big two at home. LSU and Arkansas. LSU has had one on the road, one at home. Arkansas has to play LSU and Alabama on the road. Hmm. To Sharpen Bell, the injured player. To Sharpen Bell, the cornerback being assisted off the field. And uh, here's how he was injured. We'll warn you, this is a little tough to see. A little. Jeez. Yeah. Now, Toro Freeman coming across like he does on every play, full speed, laying out, and uh, his helmet goes directly to the knee. So to Charvin Bell, assisted. Trooper Taylor was there to put a hand on his helmet, the assistant coach. Conversation among the Georgia quarterback crew and Aaron Murray heads back outside on the field. Nice to be back here, isn't it? It sure is. Beautiful venue. Yeah. Great booth for us. And it, you know, Georgia, I mean, they're, they're not even trying to put yards up now, and they've got over 400 yards in offense. They're just running the ball. Yeah. Chris Conley is on at a wide receiver spot. He's split wide to the left. There's uh, what Gary was talking about, 435. Burwell making quite a statement here in the third quarter. Followed Chris Burnett, number 68, the right guard. And just remember, as defensive teams, whether it's Kentucky or Georgia Tech or perhaps in the SEC championship against LSU or Alabama or Arkansas They're gonna see this power running game And you know, they're gonna say we have to stop this run first and remember all those skilled receivers those young freshmen Showed you that graphic True freshmen redshirt freshmen fast tight ends and Aaron Murray I think the best quarterback in the SEC this year First down of the last play Ben Jones over the ball on first and ten toss. Go well. He's working on his 100-yard night, and he'll get that much closer on that run. He had 87 yards on 15 carries, and Carlton Thomas is already over 100. And this is the unfortunate scene with the Sharvin Bell on the Auburn sideline. I have to say about Auburn, though, uh, you know, I, I thought this was going to be a tough year for them. I, I, I really do think that when you look at their October, they had those five games. They went three and two. I, I actually was surprised by that. They beat South Carolina and Florida and Ole Miss. They lost to Arkansas and LSU. I mean, that was a winning month for a, a transition year for Auburn. They're just not to this level of this team tonight, obviously. And uh, the Auburn schedule, there's a little little shoving, little extracurricular stuff at the end of the third quarter. There's the schedule, and the particularly the South Carolina, Arkansas, Florida, LSU games. They did uh, wax Ole Miss, had an open date, and now they finish out with Samford and then the Iron Bowl on November 26th. That's the end of three with our score 38-7, to seven, Georgia.
We'll return to Sanford Stadium right after this word from your local station. Big Bruce Pickens, he's going to walk. Aaron Murray with a terrific game thus far as we start the fourth quarter. He's 14 of 18 for incompletions, four touchdowns. And that has inspired the locals. He's only thrown two passes in this half, obviously in the third quarter, but two passes just. Third and two here, 10th play of the drive. Backs in the eye, it's Crowell, the deep back. He gets the handle and he again. fumbles again. There was a blitzing linebacker on the play and he tried to dodge and get the handoff at the same time and he loses the ball. Mm. Both, both of them similarly on exchanges. Watch inside Freeman. Yep, now Toro Freeman inside. Not a great block by Figgins. Tries to dodge. At the same time, he's getting the ball. Watch him try to take a dodge and drops the ball. And I believe Freeman came back he and did. in the scrum. He, he did. got it. Yes. yes, he did. And you know, I don't think Georgia has any choice here. They cannot give up on Crowell. I know Samuel's injured. They may get him back, but they don't know. They need Isaiah Crowell no matter. Trey Mason is in at tailback now for the Auburn Tigers. Here's a quick flip back. Oh, oh man. boy. Oh, Jeez. dear. Jeez. Ouch. You got to help your buddy. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking now, you're the quarterback. If the wide receiver, you expose well, him like that. Yeah, usually you would take the blame for that, but that was a screen, and his slot man has to block that okay. safety right there to give the guy a chance. That, that's just, that's a quick pass. It should be a safe pass, and look what happened. And here's a second down and 15. Ontario McCaleb. Well, that was only the second time we've seen Georgia this year. Just give me your overall impression. Oh, well, they're for real. I think they're for real. You know, early in the year when they lost to Boise State, they were very young, especially at wide receiver. Played okay. I thought they pushed South Carolina around the field, lost the game with right. turnovers. They've come on. The one spot may be the offensive line. They're not very deep there. But I, I think they're going to give anybody a football game. Anybody a football game. And they do control their destiny. If they win tonight and win next week against Kentucky, we will see them in Atlanta. Here's Mosley. Knocked down. Christian Robinson again. He's had a very active ball game. Remember, Robinson was hurt. Ogletree was hurt. I mean, they've got those guys back. At front seven, you got to give Todd Grantham a lot of credit. He's built a formidable defense. Last year, they were almost there. This year, they figured it out. Stephen Clark on to punt. Brandon Boykin back to return it. And another fair catch. Clark just uh, excellent at getting that ball way up in the air. 38-yard punt. Nothing on the return. 13-22 to go. Bulldogs going after their eighth win in succession. Well, uh, happily reminded you, this is the Deep South's oldest rivalry. One more time. 115th meeting, and it's been highlighted by Aaron Murray. Four touchdown passes in the first half. And then two turnovers. This one, Bakari Rambo returned for a pick six. Two turnovers helped to seal Auburn's fate in this ball game. Georgia does control their own destiny. If they win tonight and they win next week against Kentucky, and that game is here, we will see them in Atlanta. 38-7, 13-22 remaining. 
Well, yeah, it, as, as little run game as Auburn has, and remember the efficiency of Georgia in this football game on third down. They're 10 for 13 on right. third down. I mean, you just can't be making mistakes like they have in giving them field position or points. Carlton Thomas is on the field now. Crowell with a fumble on his last carry, and Thomas is the deep back in the eye. There's a toss. Ogletree leads him around the corner. Thomas! Boy, blocked so well. That's that toss that Georgia is famous for running, haven't they? Forever. You can almost, and this is not the size of Herschel Walker, but you remember the toss plays forever? Ogletree gets a great block, just cleans it up, and Thomas makes the great cut. Georgia's probably going to end up with two rushers of over 100 yards. I think so, yeah. And uh, Thomas now with uh, 127, and Crowell is back in there. He's only 10 yards short of 100 himself. And these were two of the three running backs who were suspended for the New Mexico State game. Crowell oh, tripped. And to Sharvin Bell went off uh, with an injury. Let's get more from Tracy Wolfson. That's right, guys. It was a sad scene on this Auburn sideline as to Sharvin Bell was crying, fearing the worst. He just went into the locker room on crutches. The renowned Dr. James Andrews was looking at him further on the sideline. He went in for further evaluation. Tight end Philip Lutzenkirchen went over, consoled him, as did Gene Chizik and all of the defensive players and defensive coordinator Ted Roof. We only can fear the worst, and we hope for the best as to Charvin Bell goes into the locker room guys. Thank you Tracy. Second down and eight. Crowell. It's pretty impressive by Georgia. Now maybe a lot of the spirit is gone from the Auburn defense. But they're basically running the ball now against a nine-man defense. Two tight ends for Georgia, one wide receiver. Ted Roof is putting basically two safeties up there. They've got it loaded in the box, and Georgia continues to run the ball up front. And Crowell now 101 yards on 20 carries. Marlon Brown breaks and goes wide right. I'd say the odds are pretty good they'll keep it on the ground here. Yeah. <laughs> you think? Uh, yep. Go well. Oh, they're just gouging him. Well, let's go back to New York. Adam Zucker with a basketball update. Adam? That's right, Vern. It's not too early, right? After squeaking by Belmont last night, Duke beating Presbyterian today, and Mike Krzyzewski ties his mentor Bobby Knight atop the NCAA's all-time win list with 902 wins. He can set the record Tuesday night at Madison Square Garden against Michigan State. Vern, back to you. Adam, thank you, and isn't that appropriate? Should he win that game and break the record, that it would happen in Madison Square Garden? Seems to be an appropriate place. Seems it? like they yeah. arranged it, right? <laughs> Second down. Bob Knight will be there for that game, by the way. And here is uh, Brandon Harton, number 20. Harton is the young man who came on last week with the suspensions and ran for 98 yards. Here's Thomas. Yes, Thomas has showed he might not be the biggest guy, but he is gashing it up there. And Isaiah Crowell is learning how to play tailback. He's extremely gifted. A little bit embarrassed coming off that suspension. Has a couple of fumbles tonight on uh, handoffs, but he's showing why he was rated as the top running back in the country, or one of the top two. Now there's the comparison. Both over 100. And uh, Harton now had 98 in his role. Former walk-on. Takes the toss and come left, comes left. And knocked out of bounds. He was taken out of that New Mexico State game, and only after the game was over did Mark Rick learn that he was at 98 yards for the game, and he said, I wish I had known we'd have given him another carry because 40 years from now, it'd be nice to tell the grandkids, you know, I gained 100 yards in the game. For the what Bulldogs. was the story Mike Bobo was telling us? Um, the coach, he was the quarterback, and Garrison Hurst had just graduated, and they had, uh, who was the next running back? Um, 
Davis or the tail Terrell Davis. Terrell Davis. Yes. And yes. the coaches kept going, God, he's not Garrison Hurst. He's not Garrison Hurst. And Bobo's going, looks pretty good to me. <laughs> Sometimes the coaches try to say, well, if you're not a superstar, you're not good enough. But you can see these running backs behind good blocking are good enough. First charge timeout. Georgia calls time. They've got two remaining 902 left in this one. 38-7 time call. Uga, what do you think? Georgia in control here. And let's take another look at the SEC West. LSU Alabama in that defensive tussle last Saturday night. And no question the play of the year in the SEC was this play. Here. Well, maybe in uh, all of college football because so much riding on it. Ball up for grabs. Michael Williams, Eric Reed. And before Williams comes down, the ball gets loose and Reed is the one that ends up with it to save either first and goal from the one or a touchdown. Incredible play. And Eric Reed, uh, we were told when he got back to the campus, went into his first class on Monday, received a standing ovation from his classmates. 9.02 to go. Second down and three. Harton is still the running back. He comes left. Darren Bates, number 25, makes the stop. I see Ben Jones lingered downfield and was uh, having a little verbal altercation well, with remember, one. Yeah. yeah. Remember last year, Ben Jones was part of that uh, end of that game when two Auburn players were thrown out. Remember the Nick Fairley stuff with Aaron Murray? It was, you know, a lot of stuff happened at the end of that game. Well, this one was strictly verbal, and he uh, took his time coming back to the huddle. 8.20 to go. Third and one. Martin got the first down, so they'll be able to continue to work on the clock. End of the game last year, Gary, and it really did get uh, gnarly out on the field. Ten personal fouls called in the game. This was fairly. And Jones. That was all part of the response. Remember, fairly had a personal foul penalty against Aaron Murray. He hit him in the back one time. Then he hit his knee late in the game on a pass rush. That was the response to it. Yep. First down and 10. 7.35 to go. Here's Crowell back in there. And once again, let's go back to New York. Here's Adam Zucker. All right, Vern, thanks. Boise State trying to stay undefeated. This is Kellen Moore finding Dallas Burroughs at the max of Moore's range. He hits him 54 yards, even if you can't see it. The Broncos have a 35-28 lead, under seven to go, Vern. Adam, thank you. I think you should know that uh, there's a, poll, uh, a, 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 a pool, not a poll, a pool here. But here's the poll question. <laughs> should, <laughs> there's another segue. Should Boise State play for the national championship instead of a one-loss team? You all seem to overwhelmingly yeah, yeah. agree put, they should not. Put it to 78%. That's where I'm at, too, I think. Crowell. Out of bounds inside the 10. And Demetrius McNeil, number 12. Well, they're just simply tossing the ball now. Nothing fancy. Just blocking up front. Follow Ogletree. Ogletree is becoming a man in this game. His brother on one side, at outside linebacker, and him at fullback. And now Georgia has accumulated 510 yards yeah. of offense. And you know, Georgia, if Georgia looks comfortable, they should be. They really don't leave the state, you know? November 5th, home this week, home next week. At Georgia Tech, Crowell dies again. Uh, touchdown! Oh, he's quick, isn't he? He has some talent. When the light goes on big time for this guy, he's going to be a force. 
It was Ogletree leading the way around the left again. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Cody Glenn, Cody Glenn, number 71, he is a football player. Left tackle for Georgia. Do they step out? Nope. No. That's the play. That's going to stand. Blair Walsh is on for the extra point. 11 plays. Every one of them on the ground. And they chewed up seven minutes and 23 seconds. Crowell now with 132 yards. Thomas with 127 yards. Georgia all night long. Got a few folks now who are uh, getting a jump on traffic as Sanford Stadium emptying as Georgia leading big. Don't forget later in the game, the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts. You know, you got to wonder what uh, Auburn and Gene Chizik is thinking. You know, they got a layup next week, but then they face Alabama at home. Will they go to Kyle Frazier and try to give Alabama a different look? Because this look isn't, I don't know if they got enough with this look. Another touchback, so that part of the, the special teams play, that was Bogate. And we remind you to stay tuned for the Jeep postgame show. Coming up at the completion of ours, Adam Zucker, Aaron Taylor back in the studio. Jeep postgame show. One of the things that uh, Georgia, besides getting bigger, they just have an edge to them, don't you think? And, oh, and yeah. I think part of it's from that man right there. Todd Grantham has brought a bit of intensity. And Mark Rick said to us, I don't, I don't even have to go down there now. I trust Todd so much. I don't even have to go down there. And I, I think this may be where Auburn might be headed. Here's McCaleb. Well, Todd Grantham, he's very emotional, uh, to say the least. And at the end of the Georgia Vanderbilt game, this was the scene. James Franklin coming out, and Grantham had to be restrained. And Monahan from Bandy gets in the way there. And that. Uh, 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 I'm sorry, that was Jim Harbaugh highlights, wasn't it? <laughs> That uh, that that got uh, Todd Grantham a conversation with Mike Slott. I understand, but I think I want my defensive coordinator with that type of attitude. Up the middle we go. Another one. That was, by the way, the seventh first down for Auburn tonight. And 160 yards, a little bit more than that. Now, here's Grantham again. That fellow's holding up the towel. To keep the signs from being shown on television. You right. It, 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 it looked like he was hiding them from Mark Rick, but that was not the case. <laughs> Second down. Under five to go. Dyer, nice tackle. Sean Williams, number 36. A veteran secondary. Good size. Rambo Williams. Four and a half to go. You know, even Cummings is good size. Plays corner for mm -hmm. them. He plays boundary corner. He's almost a safety. There's Cummings, number 19. 420 remaining. 45-7. Georgia ripped this open in the second quarter. That's a flip out to Quan Bray, number four. Well, it looks like the other side of the West is finally going to lose a game here, right? Yeah. I mean, it's been all Mississippi, Mississippi State. Finally, Auburn loses one to the East. Mark Rick, for the first time in his career, is going to win eight games in a row. That's as right. As a Georgia coach. Here's Frazier. After the play fake to McKayla, goes up the middle. And we're uh, at 3.50 in the clock running. Auburn will... Uh, once they get on the bus, will uh, the bus says will face about a four-hour trip back uh, to Auburn, Alabama. Here's Mosley coming back on now. 3:32 to go. 
And again, they've got Sanford at home next week, then the Iron Bowl, Alabama will visit. And a timeout taken by Georgia. That's their second one left. 45-7, Sanford Stadium. Forty-five seven Georgia three twenty four to go now time for the play of the game presented by Napa Auto Parts with the calls Scott Howard of the Georgia Radio Network. First and ten Tigers they fumble the ball try to hand it off on a trick play in the backfield pile up at the ball at the Auburn 40 Georgia has it right back. Mosley in the shotgun the snap he bobbled it we dive for him and intercepted Rambo intercepted on the far side heading back this way he's weaving through traffic at the 10 at the 5 gets a block he dives did he fumble no touchdown touchdown all right thank you Scott there is uh, Bakari Rambo one of the two best names in all of college football. The other from LSU, Barkevius Mingo. I know. How do, you, how do you like if you're Georgia offense? You put up 500 yards and they show the plays of the game on defense. <laughs> <laughs> that one stopped at the 40-yard line. That was Ontario McCaleb. Forty-five-seven with this victory. Pretty impressive team, Georgia. I think it's, so, too. It's the best Georgia team I've seen, and they, they've been ranked pretty hard with that Matthew Stafford and stuff, but I think they've got more defensive players than I've seen. You know, they're as big as Alabama on defense. Their defensive front seven. And they will be huge favorites at home against Kentucky next week. You know, and those big outside linebackers, Jones and Washington, Ogletree can go either side. You got some, a lot of pieces. Mosley, nice defensive job by Sanford Cummings. Tonight, the Canada Square off in South Carolina, CBS News brings you the Republican presidential primary debate. That's tonight, 8 Eastern, only CBS. Yeah. I got three things to say about that. Yes. <laughs> I walked right into it. I walked right into it. Now, uh, here's the question. Are you watching Oregon Stanford on the bus, or are you watching the presidential yeah, debate? David would kill me, but I, I think I'm going to watch Stanford, Oregon. Fourth down. Got him. Mosley sacked. And both those guys, was that Cornelius Williams and Jarvis Jones? We just talked about them. Fifth sack of the night for Georgia. One from one side, one from the other. Wow, I don't know who got them. They all look big. It was inside. It was Avery Jones, wasn't it? Oh, my goodness. Sean Williams says, taking you down. Welcome back. I'm glad you're healthy, but the Georgia defense is chippy, and they're big. Aaron Murray's finish for the night. Hudson Mason is on. And he will have a responsibility to hand the ball off now. Ken Malcolm, the tailback, got the carry then. And the player of the game, 14 of 18, 224, and four touchdowns. And it, uh, this thing broke open with Murray in the second quarter. And then the running game uh, secured yeah, it in the second half. Remember when the pressure was still on in this football game, how accurate he was. Those third down passes that he hit, the touchdown pass to Bennett, uh, the, the pass to Charles, remember, for the first down, started off the game six for six on third down. Conversions. Uh, he has shown why uh, most people think he's the best quarterback this year in the SEC. Mason hands it off to Malcolm again. He was the third of the three running backs suspended for last week's game against New Mexico State. So all three get on. Tough night for Michael Dyer. He did go over a thousand yards for the season, but fumble problems. And a forgettable night for the Auburn Tigers. It was 7-7 after the first drive by each team. And then uh, Alabama scored to go up 14-7. Really a very closely contested ball game. Back to back fumbles. Georgia gave it up to Auburn and on the next play. 
The one you just saw, Auburn fumbled it right back, and it's been all Georgia since. Final 50 seconds. Malcolm. That'll be another first down. Well, they should be too much for Kentucky, I believe. And unless, barring a miracle, we're going to see this team in the SEC championship. Georgia three. rushes for 305. And remember last, just a year ago, it was Auburn that rushed for 315. 30 first downs. Eight wins in succession for the Georgia Bulldogs. One win away from returning to the SEC championship game in Atlanta. They get there with a victory over Kentucky next week. So for Gary Danielson and Tracy Wolfson, I'm Vern Lundquist saying so long from Athens, Georgia. Aaron Murray leads the way. Four touchdown crosses. He's got 27 to lead the SEC. That's for the season. 45-7, the final score. The Chief Post Game Show is up next after these messages and a word from your local station. Good night from Athens.